background? Yeah, I have. Sorry, I have a fake background. It was <laughs> I set it up because I recorded myself for the TEC interview, uh, and I put a that background so it's like nicer in the video. But I'm gonna change that uh, to something that is not fake. <laughs> Something that is really good. Like, no, this one. Oh, <laughs> that's the real background. No. <laughs> I can that's see the real. You have to hide that magic, you know? Uh, you see the light coming from above here? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so intentions, distractions. Um, my intentions are to go through the board, do the normal thing, updates, and, and hear where everybody's at. Uh, also, Gitcoin starts tomorrow. I bet we can uh, capitalize on some of our success and get some funding for level two. Uh, and then also, I would love to talk about like what you guys, what if, if what you guys are thoughts on when we want to start level two and just having a, just having some space to talk about that. Uh, and I'll pass it to Marco. Thanks. Uh, oh, oh, distractions. Oh, no distractions. No distractions. Oh. I don't even have coffee. <laughs> Okay, so uh, yeah, intentions. I would also like to go through the board, a couple of issues, uh, just to clear those uh, in terms of um, what is required to move forward with them so we can eventually close them. Um, that's number one. Um, distractions. I'm just a little bit tired and not feeling like super, like 100%, but other than that, I'm fine. Um, and yeah, we'll also like to hear about the Gitcoin grants uh, and what can we do to get more funding for the level two. Uh, and I pass it on to Lauren. Hey, hey. Um, yeah, my intentions are the same, like just to go through the board and see what other things we can kind of clean up and it'd be super good to talk about Gitcoin. And I don't have any distractions, I'm just like fully here. And I'll pass it to Vitor. Hi guys, can you can you hear me? I was having my issues. Okay, uh, <laughs> intentions uh, show a little bit on uh, common simulator deep dive text that I'm working on. Uh, I feel changes, uh, and I think that's it. And I have uh, the only distractions that I haven't sung uh, storm coming in, and I'm a little afraid to lose my internet. I think that's it. We we'll pass to Fabio. So yeah, good afternoon, guys. Uh, as you as you know, I live uh, nearby Vitor, so the storm is coming. <laughs> that's my main distraction. It's raining and wind, so yeah, that's it. And intentions, yeah, the same. I would like to walk through the board, maybe hear something about the Gitcoin and the level two. Yeah, that would be nice. I will pass to Danny. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited to go through the board and see how much more energy and effort is needed for this first iteration. I'm super excited about a new Gitcoin grant and round two and see what that's going to look like. And I'm only distracted by the amazement of Marco's background and I'm going to try to figure out how to do it while <laughs> uh, passing it back. <laughs> I can help you with that. Uh, you just go to the Zoom uh, preferences and then video background and just download any from the internet and I can send you a couple of mines. <laughs> Alice in Wonderland. My computer is not good enough to do it, but Danny's got a new computer. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm into it, man. <laughs> uh, Lauren, did you go? Yeah. Okay, cool. I think then just Santiago. Oh, did oh, he not we make have it Santi? Together? I don't think he's here. No, I, I let him in, but then he left. Okay, cool. Uh, then let's start with uh, the fun stuff. Uh, Fabio, do you want to show off any uh, front end? Do you have anything on the front end to, uh, to show off? Yeah, yeah, I can share the, the last updates. It will be quick. We don't have a lot of fixes. But yeah, let me share. Can you see, guys? 
Yeah. Okay, so uh, since the last week, uh, I grabbed two issues, and the first one was did by Marco. He asked to add this little button here to analyze the, the charts again. So now it's working. We can go back and analyze the charts again. Uh, and on this page, uh, results page, uh, Merlin did an update. Uh, he removed the graphs here on the bottom, right? So I think that he chose it to, to, to remove. But yeah, and on the levels page, I, I will not uh, like walk through all of them, but uh, Merlin uh, decreased the size of the, the text and the size of the, like the content in general to remove the, the scroll here on the right side. So now I think it's working. Maybe later uh, then you can test and check if everything's okay, right? And the last issue that I, I was responsible for uh, was that um, on outcome page that Griff made, I think, that um, he would like to share the a, a screenshot of the page um, uh, uh, on, the, on the tweet, right? But I was, think, I was looking at the developer API docs from Twitter and actually uh, the way we, we did, the way we share the tweet, we cannot send images. So uh, I really don't have any idea on, on how to fix it. Maybe I will talk to, to Merlin to check if maybe he, he gets something and then we, we can uh, keep working on this, but I really don't have a, a major update. I have a question for the Twitter share. Um, does the Twitter grab uh, a screenshot of the page somewhere from the, you know, in the head of titles or whatever, when you share a link? So for example, if I share a link, it, a preview of that page, it doesn't, right? It just shares a logo or something. Yeah, uh, actually it shares uh, a preview page, like uh, a preview card but it's uh, an static preview card, right? Like I did the preview yeah, card. Yeah, yeah. I can share here. I know, I know. We have mm -hmm. this public and we have the simulator JPEG. That's the, is the image that will be shared on the preview Got card. It. So mm -hmm. it's fixed. Got it. Yeah, and then I, I don't think you will find any solution other than hacking something, but if you do, it will be awesome. Otherwise, um, yeah. I will keep working on that, yeah. but yeah, I don't have a, a big update for today. Okay. <laughs> You're not going to dance today, Marco, but maybe on the next No, week. no, no. Great one. Great one. Uh, I would say, you know, a, a, a simple, uh, simple solution that's like, is just grabbing the score and adding it in the text and being okay with that. I mean, I think a more complicated solution would be having an auto-populated page that you can link to or have a, or something that would just say what the score is, you know? Uh, but I honestly, I feel like that would be overkill to like have some URL where you can just fake a score, you know, that, that might cause yeah. a lot of problems actually. So um, uh, why do you even do bother the simulator? I can get a perfect score by just typing it into this uh, URL. Um, so I, I think just, if you just throw the text in, uh, we'll avoid any, uh, we'll avoid the big problems. We won't have as much fun, but that's okay. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, Merlin is not here, right? No, I don't think yeah. so. But I, I think I did uh, his updates. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. Vitor? Uh, what uh, well, Fab, uh, Vitor, do you uh, want to take it? Sure. <clears throat> like in the last uh, week, I was focused on, uh, first of all, just trying to make a simple diagram of the, like the policies of the common simulator, because the idea was like making people understand better uh, how does the simulation work, like in the general way. And then I thought that would be like a, a good way to explain uh, the how does the simulation work and kind of do what I thought what, what I did with Marco doing a call with explaining stuff was kind of make explain each uh, 
each policy that we have 15. So this could be maybe a medium pose or it will be at least like a script for me making a video. And I'm, I wrote about the, about the 15 policies and I'll send on the, the link on the uh, Telegram. Let me grab it. So yeah, so I worked on this. And it would be nice to, I still need to do a few things on like maybe writing a little bit, uh, explaining uh, the parameters, the initial, uh, the initial states. But I think the, the main part is like if the main idea was explain each, each policy, pretty simple, like no, no equations, nothing, just so people understand what each part means. So like it's, 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 it's easier to, since we're doing uh, agent-based modeling, it's easier to explain to people what each policy does, and then like people can understand what their parameter they, they are choosing affect each policy. Then like trying to explain a system dynamic way because not even who models this know exactly what happens like exactly from a given uh, set of parameters. So grab, grab it, yeah, I got it. So yeah, I wrote it and. Uh, since like English is not my native language, I might not have read this in the best way possible, but uh, it would be awesome to have some feedback on this, like uh, even if it's like narrative wise or if like something is not clear, it's not well, well explained. And I think I think could be, would be nice. I truly like don't know exactly what form will this be, but I think like documenting this information is pretty important. So yeah. Uh, it took me a while to do this, and also I made my personal branch an update for the readme on the backend. I just need to push there, so you can do this like after the this meeting, and then we can close it. And I basically got the information from Jeff's post. Uh, also, I'm finishing to work with Numba. There is a basically a kind of a library library for making a few specific code snippets run faster on, on Python. So it's more like a uh, deep uh, kind of, I'm just trying to make the, the one policy that takes almost all for time, like conviction calculating faster. And I'm trying few things and it's working fine, but I need to refine this. So along this week, I will open the pull request, probably ask for Santi to reveal it and we will have this there. And yeah, this is pretty much it. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I, for I completely forgot. Uh, we have uh, 1,300 uh, unique inputs in there. And yeah, it's pretty nice. And then uh, uh, I, I just analyzed like um, how much people do they have right now. And it's fine to go back from for the droplet that we had before or even less because we have like a four core. We had a four core that supported like 10 people at the same time, but like, with a two core, we can have like five people and like five people running at the same time. So it's pretty, like it doesn't happen right now. So it's fine, it's gonna be cheaper. Yeah, so I send, I send a message to Kay. He did not answer me yet, but uh, I think uh, probably today or tomorrow will be on a more affordable droplet and same performance, just number of cores will be reduced. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that uh, awareness on dropping on that server. <laughs> um, hey, Sebastian. Hey, Santi. Uh, Sebastian, just so you know, we're, we have a pretty normal meeting flow. Uh, so you're more than welcome to participate. Sorry, sorry uh, to crash in. Just very, no? The title sounds very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just wait. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's fun. If, if you've played the Common Simulator game, that's what uh, that's what this calls about. And then Santi, uh, did you have any uh, any updates or anything that you want to talk about in the back end? Uh, hi everyone. Uh, no, not actually. Yeah, nothing. Great. Okay, cool. So then let's move on. Um, well, oh wait. So Vitor, did you did you want um, help with that uh, with with that text? I assume Lauren or Danny would want to jump in. Yeah, I yeah. I talked to Vitor about it already. And, well, I was going to look at it today. Yeah, okay. I'm mind blown. Thank you. This is amazing. I love this so much. Thank you. <laughs> Ready to like. Awesome. Okay, sweet. Then next on our agenda is Gitcoin. Gitcoin launches tomorrow. So 
Uh, this project has been completely funded by Gitcoin. Isn't that amazing? Uh, now, some of the funding came from this specific Gitcoin grant, most of it, but then we kind of ran low the last round. We didn't do so hot. So we didn't try very hard either. Uh, but um, this round, you know, we have something to capitalize on. So, uh, you know, we did it. And I think it's a great time to thank our Gitcoin community and say, like, you guys did this, you know. Um, I can post our grant. I started updating it, didn't finish, um, but I'd be down. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's anything to talk about Gitcoin. Maybe I'll just do a quick round uh, to see what everyone thinks about Gitcoin or what we should do. Um, I, I was just gonna say, hey, if someone wants to with me tonight hack on the Gitcoin grant, I can set up a time and we can, uh, honestly, it shouldn't take too much. Um, you know, Gitcoin mm -hmm. grants, they're, they're usually better if they're short and sweet. Um, yeah. But we can change the picture and, and keep things nice. So I'll, yeah. I'll uh, talk to the people who want to uh, and set up the time. But, You're down, Danny? I'll pass I'm it down. to you. Okay, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm super excited. I'm thinking a lot about all the different grants that we have across our partnerships and stuff. Um, and this is a really great one. The reason why this one is Radical Exchange is because I donated the most last time. Um, so uh, there's there's opportunity for us to, again, fund this next level if we uh, are really on top of it and share what we're doing really good. So yes, to another Gitcoin grant, I'm game to hack on it and I'll pass it to Lauren. I don't really have anything much to add. I think it's it's great. And I don't know if you guys need more support. I feel like you're probably super capable. But if you need more support, I can help you hack on it. Um, I'm available today. And um, I'll pass it to you, Marco. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm, I'll leave that to you guys. Uh, congrats, you're the experts there. Uh, and I just want to add to that that keep it short and simple. I think that's uh, important. But also, I think we should showcase um, what we've done, accomplished so far. Um, maybe with uh, screenshots of the of the simulator, or maybe even just a little GIF or a video, something to put the right there that auto plays when someone opens opens the Gitcoin grant. I don't know, um, but yeah, something juicy, you know, and eye catching. That would be great. Uh, and yeah, I pass it on to Vitor. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not sure, but. Um... I think Rift told us that we were going to do something. I think it's NFT for like people who contributed in this, something like that. Could it like it's just crazy idea? I don't even know if it's possible. Could we make something kind of that for like people who contributed on these grand and beyond and stuff like that? Maybe it's something that is trending a lot, and maybe we could do something like that. It's not that much costier. It would be nice. I'm gonna pass to Merlin. Yeah, um, sorry for the delay. <laughs> I just meet uh, Miss the hour. So um, it's the round, um, like uh, inspiration, uh, stuff like that. Well, you can you can give intentions and distractions if you'd yeah. like. Uh, but okay. uh, then the the question is, hey, it's Gitcoin grant rounds. Any any thoughts? Um, we yeah. I oh, okay. That's... Uh, what we can do to increase uh, the number of people donating uh, for the Gitcoin grant? It's well, the topic. So, yeah. I, and, you know, for me, Gitcoin <laughs> grants are uh, about raising money, but the higher level game is a lot of eyes come in to these open source projects. And so it's like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, people donate a dollar or something to us. But also, hey, what do we want to do with this space and their attention? Okay. Um, I don't know. I, can I reflect on that and speak later? <laughs> sure. Uh, and I'll pass it to Fabio. Actually... I don't have any new idea. I really love the Vitor and Danny's idea, and I will leave to to you guys. Uh, I trust you. Uh, then we'll pass it to Sebastian. 
Uh, do you have any uh, thoughts on Gitcoin grants? I think it's very exciting, the, uh, the idea of capitalizing uh, work that way. More in the NFT, I guess it hinders a bit on the NFT part of things, but it's, it's definitely pioneering. I guess it's like Reddit coin and all this other work as you work as <laughs> mint as you work kind of thing. It's very, 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 very healthy. So we're excited to see where this goes. And uh, who's left? <laughs> uh, Santi. Santi, Santi, do you have any thoughts on uh, Gitcoin grants? Yeah, it's super cool. Um, I, I actually I missed what Peter said about the NFTs because my internet connection isn't very good right now, but I'm looking forward to know more about it. Uh, I don't know, what kind of NFTs are you going to meet? Okay, like Gitcoin kudos or like uh, other custom NFTs? I guess the one that he was mentioning was POAPs, just like a proof oh, of attention. Oh. Yeah. oh, cool. Cool, cool. Cool. Uh, was that everyone? Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I was trying to. Okay, cool. So uh, then, Danny, I'll just schedule with you and we'll, we'll hack it. It's probably good just to be two person hack slash. And maybe we can talk about other Gitcoin grants too. Uh, let's see. Next on the agenda is going through the board. Oh, uh, let me. I, I didn't take the best notes today. I'm sorry, but I do have this. Okay, cool. So we have a bunch of stuff in review. Um, we have uh, mitigate network. <laughs> Uh, edges overhead. Uh, Vitor, you said you were kind of working on that. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I'll do a pull request like tomorrow or uh, Thursday. So, yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, I, I see. Okay, so there's just going to be a second pull request. Let's just put that there. And uh, random graphic on the last page should be behind all content that closed, right, Merlin? I think uh, Fabio showed us that you uh, you got rid of that one. Yeah, in fact, I just deleted um, what's behind uh, the graph because, like, if I uh, put some opacity, it was um, I don't know weird. So I just deleted that, and uh, so yeah, it's closed. I think. Uh, uh fabio merge the the pull request yeah yeah i did it okay thank you yeah and then tighten up scroll sizing uh did you want danny to review that it sounded like uh it's merge too but yeah um i think uh danny if you can review and tell me if, uh on over screen it's weird or stuff something like that just tell me and I do the changes. Oh yeah. Yep, I will go through and take a look at them all right now while we're chatting. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, if you can, Danny, just close the issue if it's done. Will do. Uh, okay, make waiting for loading a bit more interesting. Ooh, this is a fun one. Yeah, these are the ones that I wanted to talk about. Uh, there are a couple of suggestions there. Um, also, Lauren, I think Vitor provided some sample um, text. Oh, analyzing hash, aggregating proposals. Yeah, so, 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 so yeah. What we could do, like for now, is like really animate the uh, the cat cat logo so it like kind of spins, and then like instead of just saying loading, we could just like uh, rotate these sentences like initializing hatch, aggregating certain proposals, and no matter how long, like what is the I wanted to like ask Vitor, what is the average waiting time? For example, if it's like I don't know, 15, 20 seconds, like the average. Uh, maybe we can then rotate a couple of sentences like within that average waiting time, no matter what, like even if it loads earlier, 
uh, we just you know rotate them so that the user always waits the same time basically and we can then rotate all the all the messages if you know what I mean hi uh, sorry I think my internet uh, uh, like yeah it depends a lot but between like the best scenarios takes three seconds four seconds and the worst scenario is like a minute and a half. And what is and like? Yeah, it's we can kind of predict this based on the number of hydrogen. Well, maybe so we like can imagine one minute. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could take some some average, like I don't know, maybe 30, 45 seconds. And basically, even like even if it loads earlier, we kind of fake the loading because we're we're actually rotating those messages, you know. So we're kind of faking it, but nobody knows, right? Because, <laughs> hey, uh, and like if it's if it takes longer, well, I guess like on the last message, like assessing global impact, they're just gonna have to wait a little bit more, you know. Yeah, I love the uh, the end with assessing global impact. That sounds really good, right? Yeah. And it's like, oh, this is taking a while. You gotta simulate yeah, the exactly. Here. You know, <laughs> like. Uh, I think that's great. And also the idea of just making a minimum like 20 seconds or something. The one question I have, I guess they skip it if that those results are already cached and they're not waiting at all. Because that's the, I've seen it where if you have the same input that's already happened, then it's just cached and you never, you don't wait at all. Right, right, Vitor? Yeah, but I think it will be so fast that you will not even uh, see the the sex it's like two or two, three seconds to load yeah. if it's and for that reason uh, I, I just want to I want to fake the loading I want to fake that thing that we're, we're crunching the data nevertheless because it's it, if it happens too fast it uh, the user will not know what what happened right so we actually want to put them in a position that they're they're waiting for something um, and it doesn't have to be too long so like the minimum is or you know, we decide what the minimum is or the average, and then as a, I would like us to uh, select five, six messages. Not all of them that are listed here because that would be like too much. They will they will change, uh, rotate too fast. People will not be able to read them. Um, or I don't know, maybe like three, four seconds for each. Uh, yeah, I think that's. I think those are the decisions, right? Like deciding which one, deciding how long we want to make the minimum thing probably, right? Like, cause if most of them are 30 seconds already, then yeah, fine. Let's, uh, I mean, Vitor, do you happen to have any idea on what like the average waiting time is for people? Yeah, or is that even uh, discoverable? It, it's close to one minute. Because yeah, it's, it's more close to one minute. Okay. So let's just assume one minute, right? They have to sit on this page for one minute. How many line, if we want one every six seconds, then we need 10 of them, right? Um, or something along those lines. Um, so, um, or Marco, would you like a smaller waiting time? Uh, no, like it's okay, like 20, 30 seconds, it's fine. Um, and then we just need to calculate like, like if every message is three to four seconds reading time multiplied by the number of messages, we get to the 20, 30 average, you know, whatever we decide, like, let's say, let's say 30 seconds or 20, I don't know, whatever. And then like choose that number of messages we will be rotating. Um, if it uh, takes longer, uh, they're just going to wait on the last message. That's it. Should we have something cool happening when they're waiting on that last message? At uh, least like the dot dotting like this or? Yeah, like. Logo uh, spinning or something. The logo is spinning like the all, all the time. So logo spinning all the time. And then the last message could be like assessing global impact and then three dots doing, doing a thing. Um, that's basically it. Not sure we need to add anything more to that. This is really like enhancement, but it's, um, I don't think it's 
too much effort, but it will be really good to have it to enhance the overall user experience. So who wants to take on the product ownership of this issue? Because I think there's a lot of decisions that need to be made. And of course, we could decide them all collectively, but that's always stupid. So uh, let's, let's just assign one person. I don't know, if, Marco, if you want it, Lauren, Danny, you guys are the classic product owners. <clears throat> do it, unless somebody else wants to take it, but I can do this. I think you'd enjoy it, Lauren. Okay, fine. <laughs> Awesome. You did. You did already come up with the great, uh, the, the, uh, the nice list. They're, they're fun, right? I think they're yeah. fun. <laughs> and like, really, assessing global impact as a final one is is a great choice. I think um, we, we should definitely keep that one. Yeah, don't let that one go for sure. Uh, okay, so decide a number of phrases. Decide which phrases to keep. Um, consider consider like three to four seconds reading time for each phrase. Is there any other decisions that need to be made? Uh, spin the logo all the time. That's I think that's already decided. So, and and also if it's cached, we uh, still fake the loading. Rate. Fake the loading. Fake yeah. That's so funny because we built that whole system. I'm so sorry, Vitor. We built that whole system to avoid this in our. <laughs> <laughs> no worry. Uh, if our average be just like 20, 30 seconds, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> no, but I, but I think like, uh, you know, you know, we built software that is super fast. And, and one of the problems with, with that is that, you know, the, uh, the UX doesn't work that way. You know, people don't like the user does not even know what is happening on the screen and the system should always provide feedback. Um, you know, so even if like we built something like, okay, like Google, if you search something, you want the results immediately, right? But in other applications or software, you need a response from the system and you need to know what's going on. Um, nobody likes to wait, nobody likes loading and that kind of stuff. But in our case, it's important um, to let the user know what is going on uh, because our average loading time is like, you know, around a minute or something. <laughs> uh, and I don't think like user are expecting something like super fast, um, in this case, and we take the opportunity here to even try to educate users even a bit more or intrigue them to learn more what's happening. So, so I think it's a good decision. Okay, so I'm gonna send this to you, Lauren, and then uh, when you're done, uh, I assume Fabio or Merlin will want, to, uh, will want to take it on to actually implement. Come on. So let me. Yeah. So, uh, Lauren, I'll let you pick uh, the the person to pass it to. Just uh, tell them when when you're done. Okay, sounds good. That's really cool. Uh, okay, final game score. Make more clear. What does this mean? How can the user improve? Yeah. Um... I also want to make a decision on this one because it's probably going to be an easy fix. Uh, so mm, my proposal uh, at the bottom, my last comment was to add a link uh, below the uh, results, um, but below the score, uh, so that when user can click on that link, um, could be what does this mean or you know tell me more about my score and we basically open that single page that we use for explanation for what our hatcher where what, what, what is the funding pool and stuff like that and then provide their more context about um what does like what is the score for good future and bad future actually means and that could be just one single generic um page uh an explanation page uh which will be loaded regardless of whether it's a good or a bad future, you know? 
So this this has to do with the blog. This kind of relates to the blog post that Vitor is writing that Lauren's going to uh, polish, right? I do Maybe. not know. I do not know that. I just read the the information from the description of this issue, and I think there's already some uh, content provided there. But like, if your guys are writing a blog post, you can just take out some of like key things. Well, um, what about just like a one liner, like the uh, various metrics and and penalties have been assessed based off of the performance of your of your comments. Read more, you know, it, here. And then like a link or something like yeah. that. Yeah. like just the I like your concept of like keep it short. Like I don't even know if it needs to be the full page, but it's like okay, I got a score. Oh, there were metrics. It, it's kind of like uh, okay, there's a reason why. You know, it's like uh, yeah. I, can't remember, I think it was predictably irrational or some of these studies where it's like when you just add because to the end of the sentence, even if it's just bullshit, that like people feel comfortable with it. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, like, uh, so like, hey, I, I need to cut in front of you at the water fountain because I'm thirsty, you know? It's like, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> like, okay, sure, come on. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, one of the things to consider here is also um, if we add something, um, if we add an external link below the score, or even like a pop-up to read more and then goes to the blog post, people will be going to the blog post and then not, uh, I just, they're gonna skip the sharing maybe, you know? Um, mm. And I don't want them to skip the share. I, don't, I want to keep them on this page to read more about it. And then eventually I want them to share. Um, yeah, bye Sebastian. Thanks for joining. Looking forward. Great job guys, bye. Uh, so for that reason, maybe mm, provide enough information so that they close that page or that pop-up or whatever, and then eventually share the results. <laughs> that's my thinking right from top of my head. Uh, that's, that's a really good point. We want them to tweet more than we want them to go read a blog post. Yeah. Anyone else have thoughts here? So the question is, where do we link to the blog post? Mm, question is, uh, how do we explain how the score is calculated? Uh, without without pulling them away while maintaining the requirement that they have to tweet. Right. It feels like that option should appear sooner, like maybe a, as a link in the more info text box or something. Where it doesn't take you out of the game but opens a new tab i don't know that's just my first thought uh, well um I I guess I would, we, yeah go ahead marco yeah what i would do is uh just add a link what does this score mean like uh, tell me more about my score or what does it mean uh exactly how the, you know, how, how Lauren um, titled this issue. And then it just opens that one generic page where it says, um, like, this is uh, about, this is the good future, this is the bad future, this is the meaning of that, you know, maybe one paragraph of text, and then, okay, got it, whatever, and it closes and goes back to the results page, um, and they can then share that um, without uh, the link to the blog post at this point. What if we had like a link to the blog post comes up after they share? You know how like sometimes you kind of like you share, it opens up your Facebook and one thing and then when you're like back on that page, it's like, oh, it's popped up, I can learn more now. Basically, it's a good idea, but uh, it's something that I think uh, Fabio and Vitor need to give their feedback because it opens like a Twitter pop-up uh, uh, over that page that you're currently uh, viewing. And once you click tweet, and close that, we need to somehow know that the user has actually closed that and then um, redirect the URL to something else. Right, because right now, do we go back to play again after that? Mm -hmm. I mean, user can go then and decide whether they want to play again or not. 
Uh, I don't think it happens automatically. Not sure. Well, I, I, as much as I would like, I feel like the blog post, linking the blog post in the game is just hard because we don't want people to leave the game. So I, 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 I don't know that that's in the scope of this issue. Yeah. Um, I, I also don't think we should put that constraint um, or have it. I mean, we can, we'll promote the blog post. The issue uh, is all over the place. The issue is about like what it really means. What is this, does the score mean? And having a link and opening a new like a pop up or that new overlay page with description of what it means, you know, uh, resolves this issue. Yeah. Uh, so this is another one. I guess it kind of goes really well with uh, the blog post, Lauren, that you already took on reviewing. So maybe you could, uh, after you review the blog post, you could just make like a one paragraph summary of it the best the best that you can <laughs> sure yeah i can do that yeah. and if it's two paragraphs that's okay but yeah and after this issue there's another one that need, needs content and i think like basically um Lauren, when you update this one you will be able <clears throat> to update the next one and close two issues at once. Um, Lauren, do you want to finish the simulator for us? That'd be great. <laughs> Got this. I'm here for you. Which, which <laughs> issue? Is this uh, uh, below this one, given Hatchers more info, more guidance on the info page. So basically, mm -hmm. we got we got Hatchers uh, info page, and we got also the second one is um proposals i think so they require or uh, yeah the proposals so basically when when a user clicks on you know proposals uh, or hatchers it opens that um pop-up that new page with description what it is but um the issue here is to provide more uh, more more context in terms of again what are the, what are, what does that mean what are the implications of me choosing like number three or number five Right, and that could be just another sentence or two sentences on already existing page where we explain what hatchers are. So it's it's just content uh, editing here, nothing else. So just so just reviewing that content with with this uh, with this request in mind. Exactly. Impl implementation of choice, like implications of choice, uh, like what is like, what if I choose like three or five or ten or whatever, you know. I mean, I think it's already, it's pretty much there. Kind of written well, already there, but maybe we should make it more explicit. That's all. Yeah. So the, maybe that pros and cons of like, if it's, if you pick a high number, then there's a lot of choices. If you pick a low number, then there's not. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And, and and also, like Vitor wrote this, um, you know, common simulator deep dive um, with what happens when you generate new participants, what happens when you update and then we'll generate new proposals, and maybe that could help uh, help with um, providing more uh, more context here or Lauren, more implications. Lauren, you unmuted. Did you have uh, something to say? Hmm. No, but I can I can add like a couple of lines of text into that, just being like, lots of hatchers means this, little hatchers means that, after I like go through Vitor's blog post. And... Yeah, yeah, it's all related. Like Marco was saying, it's kind of like after I summarize it, after I read it and help edit it and then summarize yeah. it and then summarize, summarize and put it in there. Yeah, one okay. thing that I, I'm thinking to do is like create a quick diagram and then like saying like each pro each of the six parameters, like where specifically does it affect like in the, in the in the policies so it will be like really specific and we might like add it somewhere like oh these effects on those three policies or something like that yeah and, and like that might even be more detailed than is needed but 
Like, I don't know that they, I don't know that we want to like take away the mystery, you know, uh, with the, with the like mechanics. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah. Sure. Sure. And you also consider that this is like the first parameter the user is uh, selecting there and, and choosing. So the hatchers and proposals. So like after the intro, they're like this is the first thing they're they're seeing. So we don't we don't want to drop a, a bomb of content to them at this stage, right? Makes sense. Oh no, <laughs> um, you won the internet. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to move on to uh, um, some other issues, and I want to. We have three minutes because I want to spend some time just uh, doing a round of like what we want to do for level two. So. This is an issue, Danny, it sounds like you wanted to brainstorm this in the Telegram chat. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, actually, you know, I see what Lauren came up with for the, the waiting things. And I just think we need to have something other than good future, bad future. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, and I don't know how creative I get to be with that. Can I say that if the score is between a certain range, it pops up a specific message? Because that would be really cool. Look at this, nice, 980. I know, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that should be like pristine future, you know? Like, right. yeah, that, well, uh, Danny, I'll, I'll put it on you to lead this one, uh, if yeah. that's cool, and we'll and uh, take it home. And then when you're done, you can assign it to uh, Fabio or Merlin, whoever wants to take yeah. it. And so technically, that's a that's a good way to go. That if the score is between a range, they get a specific message. If that's the if that's easy and cool, I'll go with that route. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Another issue: Do we want to do the high scores list? What do you guys think? I do want to do it. I did see that once I knew what the tricks were, it's pretty easy to get above 960. So we'll end up filling it pretty quick with high scores, but that encourages people to keep trying, right? Yeah, there's a little bit of pride. Uh, I, I think we can skip it, honestly. Uh, uh, you know, I, 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 think it, I, I think it's something we need for sure eventually, but I don't know if it makes the fast follow. It seems like a feature instead of a, or quite the feature without like a huge upgrade. But the the comms team did ask for it. So yeah, one of the things we could do the leader like ha have a separate page for leaderboard. Uh, could be a fast follow, separate page for leaderboard because that one will be shared. I hope a lot. Okay. That would be something we could easily add into that tweet as a static image too, if we. Uh, okay, cool. Well, I, I'm gonna put it in a product backlog just because I don't want us to take on too much more work. Uh, than mm -hmm. just, because this like, it sounds like we would, Marco would need to make the design. We would probably need to work on the back end to aggregate scores and remember scores. Or, or do something mm -hmm. and then make the front end. It's just such a big thing. I think uh, it's something that would be nice in the next round. It doesn't have a lot of, it doesn't carry enough benefit for this first one, but like being able to work on it later so it's ready for the next one would be valuable. Okay, and uh, there are two more issues I want to talk about. Uh, Telegram, Discord. Oh yeah, so I think the thought here was that, what was the thought here? Why we uh, wanted to ask people for their Telegram or Discord handle? Was it for like the scoreboard eventually, I think? So if, if I'm gonna put that in, I need to see a format. Like, is it like the at symbol, like, kind of grayed out in the background. Like if I'm, am I supposed to enter my Telegram or Discord handle into that box? And I want to, I guess I'm, it just wasn't clear to me how to fill that out. I guess the benefits I see of it, like looking post 
after it is we can just praise to these people uh and if we have their telegram or discord and uh we can when we do like high score lists you know it's more fun to have a handle than uh than like your name Marco, you look like you had something to say. Yeah, I, I don't know what decision was here. I just, one day when I opened the simulator, I saw like Telegram and Discord. Oh, when we, when did we add that? Um, problem with Discord for me is uh, my username. I have no idea what my username is. It's Marco, then I don't know, minus some numbers. Um, and maybe there's there are some settings I can change that, but I don't know. Uh, and Telegram is easy. And I agree with Danny, we should either uh, put an at symbol at the username as, as an example or nothing, I don't know. But it's usually it's at, you know, similar to Twitter. So right now in the background, we have uh, Telegram or Discord. That's where we tell them the Telegram or Discord. So yeah. it, it might be hard to have the at. No, it's in the when without like when um, the default text for the input field um, says just username, right? No, the default text for the like the grayed out text in the form says Telegram or Discord. Oh, we changed that. Um, we because oh, it's yeah. like too big. We changed it, uh, and oh, we put yeah. like the grayed out text above Telegram or Discord, and then below we have like the username. I mean, I'm not just not sure if it says at username or just username. So if, oh. if there's not. Yeah, no. right now it just says username. Enter your username. Add, add monkey, yeah, add the monkey symbol, and that's all. Mm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a monkey. Who wants to take that? It's pretty quick. Yeah, I can trick this. That was Fabio, right? Yeah. So. Okay, and the last one is the readmes. Oh man, we don't have much time. Uh, um, readmes, Vitor and Fabio, did you have any uh, thoughts on that? Is this something we want to prioritize? Oh, I I worked on this, and it probably will have like today or tomorrow a quick alignment with Fabio to update this because it's probably done. Wow. Yeah. Me too. Like I, I'm just adding information about the front end deployment, and I think that's it. Then we can merge. Cool. Uh, so I would say merge uh, freely, but then once you merge, um, the content team wanted to review. Okay. Uh, okay. So we'll skip this one. And really quick, uh, what do you guys want to do for level two? So. Uh, the idea for level two is that we, uh, you know, have a new character. Uh, the background is that in the second Gitcoin round, we said that Shebnem could pick. Uh, she was the, we did Radical Exchange because Danny was the highest donor to our first round. The second round, we did the same game for level two and Shebnem won. So Shebnem will get to pick the, um, the theme and then, uh, and then, the idea would be that we would just pull out stuff in the simulation already, uh, like the vesting or maybe things more related to the bonding curve uh, and like not have, and then have these parameters chosen for the people, you know? Uh, so we have the same kind of format. Uh, so that's kind of the concept. I don't think it'll be so much work. I mean, it will be work though. It'll definitely be a project. How do we visualize all these things? Um, the question is, when do we, do we want to take time off from this and then go in and, uh, and go in full force, like in a month or something, or do we want to just keep going every week, keep up the tempo and push? Um, I am, I have no opinion. I'm going to pass it to Marco. All right. Thanks. Uh, well, first, first we need a new narrative, a uh, new storyboard and everything else, I guess. Uh, one of the things that I would like to do, uh, I would like to pause uh, with uh, like just minor updates that we need to fix. Uh, we have on the Zen Hub, close everything uh, and then take a pause. And then for the leap two, I would like to see what can we do uh, with some web-based gaming engines, uh, maybe Canvas, WebGL, Phaser, whatever there, there is out there. Guys like, you know, Fabio, re do the research. Um, and then when we do the leap two, 
that it really feels like a game um and actually create a game you know where you click stuff and move your character and have those speech bubbles and stuff that is happening and there's audio and effects and i don't know uh, whatever that would be my 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 wish i'm gonna pass it on to um vitor okay uh i don't know maybe on the model itself maybe something probably less agent based or we need a lot of hypotheses and maybe something more i don't know like we model something that um, that kind of exists, like we model, you know, uh, the the dynamic itself, and people might play with, and I don't know, maybe something more kind of competitive, not, not competitive, but I like to to see people like build something that is solid, like the in model itself, like something how something works, and then we might like try to uh, ask for people try to solve their things like maybe like asking we do something kind of this game and then ask for people like try to do some some reinforcement learning stuff or something like that to try to be this and have the best results something like that. i don't know best to learn i but i didn't hear the most important thing is do you want to pause or do you want to keep going i like maybe pausing is good for like having a distance from how it is right now and have new perspectives maybe. Danny? Oh Lauren. Yeah you go. Yeah. Um yeah I, I love the idea of making it like making leap to more gamey. That's gonna be super exciting. I was feeling super excited and everything Marco was saying. And I think pausing is really good. Like even if, if we don't pause for a month, even just we pause for like a couple of weeks because it's really I think good to have that like dust settle period of time after everything's closed out in the board, dust settles, and then we can come back into it with like more creativity. Um, I'll pass to Dane. Yeah, um, I think wrapping up and closing everything and celebrating to, with a pause and then starting back up is essential. I think what Marco was sharing about making it a more gamey in the next one and finding uh, how to do that is a really great step and it just made my mind think how many how many uh episodes or iterations does it take for us to go from comic book to single player game to multiplayer game to virtual reality i don't know <laughs> i see the I, I see in the long scope like what's the next right step single player interactive character sounds epic that's doable and uh dream plan do celebrate. Let's celebrate and dream in the next one and get then get to planning. That's my thought. Uh, Merlin? You're muted, Bri. Uh, I, well, I, I, sorry, I tried to pass it to Merlin. Oh, uh, Fabio. Let's go, Fabio. Okay, my internet, my connection is slow, but uh, I will try. Uh, I agree with you guys. Uh, I would uh, prefer to uh, pause the the work now. I think that we have some minor issues, but yeah, like it's minor issues we can fix in ten minutes or half an hour. Then you guys can assign me and Merlin, and you can can take on it. And about the leap to, I really love the, the idea that Marco gives us, like uh, HTML5 and WebGL are really powerful. Uh, a lot of uh, apps are being built on top of that. So we could like made a, a couple of research and try to develop uh, a really like multiplayer gaming, like a real gaming. Uh, it would be nice. Ready? Can you see? Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Sorry, I yeah. I left. I I don't know. <laughs> I encountered some several issues with Zoom. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, the idea of creating um, uh, a game, a real game, it's really uh, really cool. But 
just I, I think <laughs> that we will need uh, more dev, <laughs> like uh, more than two developers <laughs> uh, to to tackle that. But uh, yeah, the idea is great, and uh, uh, I agree with uh, like the majority of uh, of the persons that uh, we maybe need a pause, like just to reflect on what we've done and just to uh to come back and with new ideas and yeah more creativity yes i think uh thinking it's cool that being in the uh, in the rush and uh, yeah that's it i don't know if i need to to pass to uh, somebody santi. else Hello. santi okay so <laughs> i pass to santi yeah, so yeah, the, this idea of, of creating a game with this new narrative is super cool. Um, actually, I think uh, there's like, there's someone hack the integrated like the Unity engine with blockchain in one of these hackathon projects during in Denver. So it's something that really cool to, to, to check. Um, I think probably we'll, we can get like some inspiration from this uh, work from, I don't remember, the, the name of the author, but there's something called the evolution of trust, where uh, you can like uh, learn about game theory and in a gameable, gamified way. So it's like another like good way, like we can get some inspiration for the next narrative. And, and yeah, in terms of uh, what if you, we should pause or continue, maybe as I wasn't. Um, being much much active in the latest uh, weeks, um, uh, maybe if uh, I could like start like uh, doing some research and and yeah, while I, while the while the other people that, that just uh, finish the, the the current game, you know, close close submissions on the current game, uh, and when they do that, we, we can I can like start like um, looking into some ideas as for the next stage yeah cool okay that sounds good well let's for sure come back next week so we can review the issues that we uh that we're tackling and then uh and also probably take some space to spam twitter and all the stuff for gitcoin uh and then uh and maybe one more week after that but then we take a pause and it'll be great and uh and i'll miss you guys i guess we're building the same uh the real dashboard for the TEC too, right? So, you know, uh, we can all move over there and, and start building the real common simulator. Anyway, hey guys, uh, sorry for being late. Thank you guys for the great work again, and I'll see you next week. Thanks. Thank you, bye. everyone. Bye. 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 Bye